Hi folks, it's good to be with you. We're going to be looking at uh, a gentleman who was used of God to bring John Calvin to salvation. And that was Louis de Bourguin. Louis de Bourguin. Okay. Louis de Bourguin. And um, you can follow what I'm about to share. Let's see if I can get it on my. That's a document there. And we'll read. Okay. Louis de Bruguin, the reformer who influenced, influenced John Calvin. He was burned at the stake as a heretic on April the 17th, 1529, for refusing to recant his beliefs. Louis de Bruguin. 1490 to 17th of April, 1529, was a French lawyer and civil servant, linguist and noble and Protestant reformer in the 16th century. He translated Erasmus uh, and Chiridion and other works and treaties of Hutton, Luther and Melchonon. He wrote a defense of Luther and a treatise De Sacredition. Berquin was born of a noble family around 1490 in Vux, Berquin, coming into contact with Christian humanists such as Erasmus and Jacques Lefou et Thibault. He began to study the Bible for himself and to advocate reform of the French Catholic Church from within. He desired to free France from the power of the Pope. He was very close to the King Francis I. Berquin was a zealous supporter of the Roman Church at first. He was an enthusiastic adorer of the saints, and he had undertaken to prepare a history of the saints and martyrs as given in the legends of the church. This was a work which involved great labor, but he had already made considerable progress in it when thinking that he might obtain useful assistance from the Bible. He began his study, and with this object, here indeed he found saints brought to view, but not such as figured in the Roman calendar. A flood of divine light broke in upon his mind, and in amazement and disgust he turned away from his self-appointed task and devoted himself to the word of God. Precious truth which here he, uh, he discovered he soon began to teach. Reading the scriptures, Berquin found the doctrine presented by Luther to be true, and he wrote, it is, it, is, it is God who gives us, by faith, the righteousness which by grace alone justifies to eternal life. His writings aroused fierce opposition among traditional scholars. However, King Francis I and his sister Margarete of Vialois intervened in his behalf. Marguerite especially defended him, writing to the noble and de Montemornesi after Berquin was released from one arrest. I thank you for the pleasure you have afforded me in the matter of poor Berquin, whom I esteem as much as if he were myself, and so you may say you have delivered me from prison, since I consider in that light the favor done to me. Dwelling upon the mysteries of redemption, he explained all the unspeakable greatness of the exchange. The sinless one is condemned, and he who is guilty goes free. The blessing bears the curse, and the curse is brought into blessing. Life dies, and the dead live. The glory is, is whelmed in darkness, and he who knew nothing but confusion of face is clothed with glory. His friend Erasmus stated that he was highly respected at the French court. And that he was a religious man but hated the monks on account of their ignorance and fanaticism 
while he translated Luther's work, uh, De Votis Monasticus, he was denounced by the Sorbonne as a heretic. In a letter to Erasmus, Berquin accused the divinity professors of Sorbonne of impiety, and in 1523, the Parliament of Paris and his books were seized, had his books seized and ordered Berquin to abjure his opinions and to pledge himself neither to write nor to translate any more books against the Church of Rome. At his book sees an order Berquin to abjure his opinions and to pledge himself neither to write nor to translate any books against the Church of Rome. On his refusal, he was sent before the ecclesiastical tribunal of the diocese. Francis I liberated him from prison and submitted his case to the chancellor of his council, who demanded of Berquin the abjuration of some heretic opinions, opinions which the later complied. In 1525, two councillors of the court of Rome denounced him as having relapsed into heresy, but he was again set free again by the, in, the interposition of Francis I. In 1528, he was again arrested and tried before a commission of 12 members of the parliament, which decreed that his book should be burned, his tongue pierced, and that he should be imprisoned for life. On this judgment, Berquin appealed to Francis I, but the commission, considering this appeal a new crime, ordered him to be burned, but in consideration of his nobility, to be previously strangled. The process of witness wrote, Louis de Berg was of noble birth, a brave and courtly knight. He was devoted to study, polished in manners and of blameless morals. He was a great follower of the papal constitution and a great hearer of the masses and sermons, and he crowned all other virtues by holding Lutherism in a special abhorrence. But like so many others providentially guided to the Bible, he was amazed to find that not the doctrines of Rome, but the doctrines of Luther. Henceforth, he gave himself with entire devotion to the cause of the gospel. Louis de, de Bergouin, who had treated Lutherism with abhorrence, was considered by many in France to be a reformer even more powerful than Luther. If Berquin had been supported by Francis I, as Luther had been protected by the elector, Berquin would have had much more impact on Europe than Luther, but this was not to be the case. Instead of being protected, Berquin was imprisoned by the papal authorities. Erasmus tried to persuade Berquin to go into exile to protect himself but the Queen decided to meet error head on to show that Rome had been misleading the people and that they did not agree with the truths found in the Bible. The Queen challenged the Roman scholars at Paris University to prove their doctrinal position by the Bible, and the scholars knew that they would be proved false and were not prepared to lose face. So these scholars looked for a, a way of escape. As with Luther, the Roman authorities blamed those in the Reformation for any civil unrest. A statue of, Mer of Virgin Mary had been vandalized in Paris, and the authorities claimed that it was Berquin's encouragement and influence that incited vandalism. The scholars blamed both Berquin and the Lutheran teaching for encouraging such lawlessness. On the 16th of April, 1529, the French Parliament condemned him to watch as his books were burned, to have his tongue pierced, and then to be imprisoned without reading material for life. When Berquin refused, even by silence, to condone the condemnation of the truth, he was returned to prison. The next day, 17th of April, 1529, on the basis of accusations, Berquin was ordered to be killed. The Queen was both strangled and burnt, being made an example of what was to happen to those who did not uphold the teaching of the Roman Church. All his original works are lost. Only a few of his Erasmus translations remain. If the Roman Church had thought that silencing Bequeen, such an influential person in the French society, was going to send a message that no one is protected, even if a prominent member of society, 
from the wrath of the church, they totally misunderstood, they totally underestimated the outcome of their actions. Instead of discouraging the efforts of the reformers, it spurred them on with new vigor, spreading the word of God further afield. Lefeu went to Germany, Farrell went to his hometown to spread the good news of the gospel. Even though Farrell met with opposition from the authorities, he went from house to house preaching the gospel privately. The actions of the Roman church against such a well noble, such a well-known nobleman of France as Bequeen sent shockwaves around Europe, magnifying the fervor and commitment that a person of his substance exhibited despite all that he had to lose by taking the course of action. Demonstrated how much more important what he stood for was than all the wealth and power that he had in his hands in social terms. Such a large sacrifice made, pe made people take note in a much closer interest why Berquain was prepared to give up so much for a belief and ideology. Calvin was such a man swayed by this event. Calvin was the academic pride of his college. Hearing about the reformers and their heretical views, Calvin decided he wanted nothing to do with their heretical opinions. However, this event made Calvin interested to listen to a cousin who, had a, who as a result of this event, joined the reformers. The cousin pled with Calvin to accept Jesus as savior, but it was because of Bequoian's testimony that persuaded Calvin. It was not until Calvin personally witnessed the peace and the serenity of a so-called heretic being burned at the stake that he realized that there must be something worthwhile in the scripture for people such as Bequeen and others to give up their lives for it. Calvin knew that it was upon the Bible that the heretics based their faith. He therefore studied the Bible to see if he could vindicate the Roman church position. And in studying the Bible, Calvin made a discovery of his life. Whether dead or alive, Bequeen was a testament to the worth and power of the gospel. It made men and women around Europe realize the importance of the gospel and the word of God. Hello, hello, hello. God bless you all. Ryan, Jerry, a chap with a Greek name. <laughs> so there's the story. So there's the story, folks. What an amazing story. What an amazing guy. What an amazing guy. There's our website if people want to go on. That's a picture of him there. You can see there at the back of me. That's the guy we're talking about. And that's the guy who influenced John Calvin to come to the Lord. When Calvin saw this guy being burnt at the stake, it made Calvin go to his Bible and it made Calvin listen to his cousin about salvation. What a story. I feel like crying. There are pictures of this guy, so let me get some pictures. For those who don't know, David's son, David Wood's son has passed away. For those who, who, who don't know, keep him in prayer. But uh, this is uh, some pictures of the reform, this reformer. Let me get some pictures. So here it is, some of the pictures there. So 
doing that. So we're going up. So I hope that was a blessing to you. I hope that that story was a blessing to you. And um, it's inspired me to encourage preaching the gospel. So this this guy had everything. He had wealth, he had power, he, he, he had everything, but he gave it up for the gospel. They hounded him, they persecuted him. And in the end, the king, not even the king or the queen could save him. <coughs> you know? Not even the king or queen could save him. So I'm going to go. I hope that's uh, been a blessing to you. I hope it's been an encouragement to you and inspired you. Please pray for me and my wife as we do mission in Ghana. That's our website. And if you want to support us, you can do that at the website. So God bless you folks and keep us in prayer. Amen. Amen. So God really moved through this chap. He really used this chap. It's martyrdom. I, I wrote a booklet. Um, it's called Exposing the Prosperity Preachers. I've had it printed here. I had a thousand copies printed, so I'll be distributing this amongst the Ghanaians. Pray that God would use it to expose a lot of these false prophet pastors here in Ghana. And so I pray that uh, it's a leaflet that will be used of God to bring the reformation in Ghana where there's a true preaching of the word of God. So God bless you. Love to you all out there. May God be with you. And uh, let's pray. So come to the end let's pray dear father we thank you for this man lord this amazing man who stood for you and he laid down his life for the gospel it encouraged Farrell it encouraged others it encouraged Calvin Look at the legacy of Calvin, Lord, how he wrote and stood for you, Lord. So, Lord, forgive us. Maybe a track that we give will raise up a Calvin in Africa or a Calvin in UK. So, Father, forgive us for, for not having the faith to believe that the seed that we sow is going to bear fruit. We give you the prayers. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We magnify your name, that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that you deserve praise and glory. I pray for my brothers and sisters that listen to this video, that they'll be encouraged and strengthened and blessed, O Lord. And may they, may they know your comfort and encouragement. So, Father, we give you the praise and the glory. We give you the honor today. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, these three are one. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, folks. Please, uh, there's a link. I think there's a link, a little bit of story and a link under the video. So please uh, find out more about uh, the chat. And may may it encourage you. May it encourage you, yeah? Uh, thank you, sister, yeah. So God bless you. Have a good evening. Have a good evening. And uh, God bless you. Take care. I'll see you, God willing, tomorrow. Um, if I'm preaching uh, on the streets or doing evangelism, I'll film it so you can see it. And uh, God bless you. Take care.